In this video, you'll learn about terminal emulators and bash. You'll learn what a terminal emulator is. You'll learn where the terminal emulators are in your distribution in Linux. You'll learn the relationship between terminal emulators and the command shell, and you'll be introduced to the bash command shell and the bash prompt. This is a terminal, a keyboard, a screen, serial communications hardware, simple graphics, and text. This is how you communicated with Unix and Unix-like operating systems for most of their history. Even though Linux was born on microcomputers with video cards, keyboards, and mice, even though this particular Linux system is running in a virtual machine, it still has all the serial terminal anatomy. Most of the best tools for Linux system administration expect nothing more. When we talk about terminal emulators, they are software to emulate this specific terminal, a digital equipment VT220 or its predecessor, the VT102. Most Linux distributions make the terminal emulator fairly easy to find. In Ubuntu with the standard Unity desktop, it's under the search icon, and it's right up front in applications. In most Ubuntu variants, such as Zubuntu, Lubuntu, and Ubuntu GNOME, it's in applications accessories. In Mint and Ubuntu with Cinnamon, it's in the shortcuts on the left. In Kubuntu with the KDE Plasma desktop, look in Applications, System, Terminal. It's called Console with a K. In Fedora's GNOME 3 desktop, it's right there under the Activities shortcut. Whatever terminal software you're using, put it someplace easy to find, on the desktop, in the dock if you have one, on a panel launcher. You'll be using it a lot. For the rest of this video, I'll blow the terminal window up to fill the whole screen with nice large print to make it easy to read. When you start your terminal software, it takes the place of the hardware terminal, the serial hardware, and a Linux service called getttty. It creates a text window, interfaces with the keyboard and mouse, and invokes a command shell. We'll be using bash. This is bash. In case you've never used one before, a command shell is a program that reads commands from the terminal and sends results back to the terminal. Bash is a command shell. Bash is also a programming language. Bash programs, like any other command shell programs, are called scripts. Your Linux system has lots of scripts that it runs when you start it up. Nearly all of them are written in bash. They're easy to modify, human readable, and maintainable with nothing more than a text editor. There are dozens of command shells, some of them dating back to the 1970s, but bash is the most common among Unix and Unix-like operating systems today. So before we start telling bash what to do, we should look and see what bash is telling us. For this demonstration, I'm gonna use a bunch of commands I haven't introduced yet. We'll get to them all. The prompt here tells us some very useful pieces of information. First, it lists what account I'm logged into. Right now, I'm logged in as JRS. That's my account. If I change to the root account, you can see that Bash tells me. This is important. The root account has a lot of privileges and can turn your Linux computer into an expensive brick with a single command. So let's get back to my account. The next thing the prompt tells me is what system we're on. Vubu is the host name for the virtual Ubuntu machine I'm using for this demonstration. I gave it that name. There's nothing special about it. When you use SSH to log into other Linux computers, or if you use virtual machines, the host name becomes very important. After that is a colon, and after that is a tilde. The tilde means I'm in my home directory on Vubu. If I change directory to slash var slash log, for example, Bash tells me. The dollar sign is a very old traditional way for Bash to tell us that our input is required. It also changes if we switch to the root account. Every Linux distribution has its own conventions for what the Bash prompt should look like. This is Fedora. The prompt will usually give you the same information, but it may be in a different order. It's important to remember that Bash is just another program. You can call it from within a Bash shell. Just type Bash and press return. The prompt may change, or not, depending on how your Bash configuration files are set up. The exit command terminates the Bash shell. Since we've started three Bash shells, in addition to the one that was started for us by the terminal emulator, we have to type exit four times. The first three exit a Bash shell and hand us back to the previous one. When we exit the Bash shell our terminal emulator started for us, the terminal emulator usually exits too. There's really only one important difference between using a terminal emulator and a real terminal, aside from not maintaining a 35-year-old piece of equipment. Real terminals get what's called a bash login shell. It prompts you for the username and password, sets the home directory to your account, and hands you off to bash. A non-login shell is what you got when you started your terminal emulation software. They don't ask for username and password. They assume you've already logged in through the GUI. This seems like a trivial thing, until you set out to change your personal bash configuration. 
you have to know which file to edit. Linux distributions vary on which one is the right one and whether they know the difference between a login shell and a non-login shell, and where in your account they actually put the files. If you want to modify them, you have to look up the specific locations and files for your distribution of Linux. For now, I suggest using Bash in its default configuration.